Hello guys, and welcome to another discussion video. And the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack has been out for a little over a year now. And overall, I would say I kind of have mixed opinions on it. And in this video, I'm going to kind of go through to see if it's worth it or not. So, I wouldn't say the service is necessarily bad. When it released, it was very controversial. But now, I would say it's not as controversial. It's still kind of a mediocre service overall. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm only buying it to really kind of review it and review the games that are they're including. And it's actually a fairly convenient way to get Nintendo 64 games because sometimes emulation can be a bit weird on um, my PC, but um, I would say emulation definitely is better because, I mean, I'm not trusting Nintendo with those games. I mean, I, I it kind of sounds weird to say because Nintendo is the official um, way to play those games, but I would, I would still say an emulator is still more reliable because, I mean, they've been working on those emulators um, for years on the PC, and I feel like games are better optimized because it, it took a while for the games to actually be optimized on the Switch and everything, because there were a lot of problems when the expansion pack released, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So I'm going to go through my negatives with this first. Definitely, I definitely say that there are more negatives and positives here, um, but the first one is still too expensive. It, it really shouldn't be $50. It should really be $35. At most forty dollars, um, like fifteen to twenty dollars extra, is for what they're offering. It it really isn't worth fifty dollars. It may seem like it, but like you really don't get to keep anything that's included with this. It's a subscription service. Like you have to keep paying for it. It it, it really shouldn't be that much. It really shouldn't be the actual price you'd pay for like the thing. I know, like it sounds like a good deal. When you, when you think that there's over 20 Nintendo 64 games and a bunch of Sega Genesis games and the DLC, but you aren't keeping that. So it really shouldn't be, like, it, it really doesn't make sense that it's $50 other than the fact that it seems like Nintendo's trying to squeeze um, as much money as they can out of people. But um, definitely too expensive there. And I also feel like they should include it like as like a separate thing i feel like people should be able to pay for it separately rather than buy it as one i know you get a discount if you already have nintendo switch online but they should really have it to where you could just add it to nintendo switch online i think it's really weird and kind of an archaic system that they have it as a separate subscription it doesn't really make any sense because it, it includes everything that nintendo switch online has so it should really be a thing that you could add to your Nintendo Switch Online subscription rather than, like, just buy outright as a completely separate service. It, like, it, I mean, I know it, like, it kind of makes sense in terms of peers and everything, but the fact that they call it an expansion pack and the fact that they're, like, having other things on there, it, it just kind of makes it weird that they have, um, like, a whole separate... It's technically a whole separate subscription. It, it's just kind of weird how that works. And another thing is that it only includes Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis. They didn't include anything else, well, or they didn't add anything else to it. I was really expecting them to add at least Game Boy and Game Boy Color and maybe Game Boy Advance games to this. But no, it's just the same games that we've had since last year. It's so weird, and I don't know why they aren't doing anything about it. I mean... They have added some things, but it's really not too much. And the DLC is only limited to specific games, like Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, and Splatoon 2. And now, Nintendo's pushing out Splatoon 3, so it doesn't really make any sense that... Well, I mean, it made sense at the time when they did put the DLC for Splatoon 2 on there, but now Nintendo's pushing Splatoon 3... So there's definitely going to be a lot of people who aren't going to benefit from that Splatoon 2 DLC there. And Mario Kart, I would say that's a decent inclusion. I would say that it definitely is kind of a selling point, for, uh, along with the Nintendo 64 games. Um, even though that's a whole controversy on its own, I would say that's, that's decent. I mean, that's a decent inclusion. Same with Animal Crossing. A lot of people have that game as well. 
Um, but the thing is, not everyone has those games. They should really have a wider variety of different things. Um, if they're really picky about, like, how much they're including or, um, like, if they're including too much or not, they should make it to where people can choose what DLC or they can make it work to where they can choose, like, any first-party Nintendo DLC. Like, let's say they let you choose, like, three or four DLCs for different games. I think that would be fine. I don't know why they have to have super specific DLCs in there. It's just really weird when looking at it, when comparing it to, like, the other um, companies' um, subscription services and different things like that. Like, it's just really specific with Nintendo, how they include, like, Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, Splatoon. I know those are insanely popular games, for, and they're definitely selling a lot of copies, but it's still weird how they're only including, like, a couple games, and it's just pretty specific. And they're definitely not enough to justify the price, because, like I said, everything's limited to the subscription, and... When your subscription runs out, you'll get to keep the DLC. They have to implement a whole separate structure into Mario Kart and Animal Crossing. Just to, just to where um, the DLC wouldn't be accessible once you're not paying for the subscription. It's so weird, it's so backwards, and it's just... I, I hate that they're doing that with the um, expansion pack and everything, but... Um, yeah, it, it, it's just... I really don't like what they're doing with that, but, um, and it also uses the same, I know it's obvious, but they're using the same peer-to-peer -peer online structure, no changes there, even though you're paying a premium, just it, the same structure as the Nintendo Switch Online and everything, and it's pretty unfortunate. I mean, they should really, since you're paying for Nintendo Switch Online in general, they should really have servers, like, they should really have servers in general, and especially... For the expansion pack, they should have better online. Well, I, I would still be kind of crappy if they if Nintendo had to charge you for like better online with the expansion pack. But they should at least like I, this is more of like a criticism for the Nintendo Switch Online overall. They should really have a better structure in place because you're still paying fifty dollars and getting that peer to peer online. It just kind of sucks. Um, I know it works for like some games like Mario Party Superstars and. Um, Splatoon occasionally when it doesn't like do the um communication error. Mario Kart works fairly well. Um, but a lot of other games, it just depends on your connection, which really shouldn't be the case. Um, because if someone else has a bad connection, it's gonna be laggy. Like even if you have like a really strong internet connection. So I really don't like that system. That's kind of a criticism for Nintendo Switch Online overall, but it sucks that you still pay extra and still have that. Um, but let's kind of move into some of the positive things I have um, about this, because I actually do. I actually do have a couple things. Um, one, it is a convenient way to play Nintendo 64 games. I know there are emulators, and I would prefer to play emulators like if you're like, if that's accessible to you, if you have like a PC that's powerful enough to play it. But I would say it is kind of convenient to play Nintendo 64 games on the go. Like, they're actually, like... Because I know it, it is a bit of a struggle to get, like, um, the Nintendo 64 games or um, and emulated games in general, um, like, on a smartphone or, like, any portable device. Um, I know you could buy, like, a um, Steam Deck or something like that, but th that's expensive. I mean, Nintendo Switch is probably the easiest way to go in order to play these Nintendo 64 games. Despite it being expensive, it's still... It, like I feel like it's still not a lie to say that it's still pretty convenient to play these Nintendo 64 games or Sega Genesis. I Actually, honestly, for Sega Genesis, I would say there were better ways to play it, um, even at a um, convenient and cheap price. But Nintendo 64 games, I would say, yeah, they they kind of is a convenient option. And the emulation has also improved. They have um, optimized a lot of things. And I would actually say it's decently good from what we've gotten recently. Because Pilot Wing 64 and supposedly the Mario Party games run in 60 FPS, at least from what I've seen. So I think that's good that they are optimizing the games for the Switch um, and everything. They're actually. It actually seems like they're putting a little more time into um, optimizing these games. Like, when it first released, it feels like they were just slapped out onto the Switch. 
Like, there were a ton of problems, especially in Ocarina of Time, and then later Paper Mario. But it seems like they're kind of ironing out most of these problems, and most of the new games that they're adding don't really have many problems. So, I at least haven't had any problems with Pilot Wings or Mario Party. So, it seems like they are kind of improving and optimizing these games. I mean, that's the bare minimum, but I'm glad they're not having too many problems now. Like, Paper Mario's playable, Ocarina of Time's playable. So, it, it has been getting better. And another thing I'd say is that the release schedule for the Nintendo 64 games is consistent. Like, they have been releasing one game a month, except for September. That might be due to the Direct, I don't know, still pretty weird. But it's good that they have been releasing these at a consistent rate. And it is a good deal if you have the three games that the DLC is compatible for, like Animal Crossing, Mario Kart, and Splatoon 2. I have all three of those games, so it's actually kind of convenient since I didn't have the DLC for Splatoon 2. And it's a kind of convenient for Animal Crossing and Mario Kart, even though you don't own the DLC. Um, if you don't have the um, subscription, it kind of runs out and everything. Still is kind of convenient, but yeah, I would, st I would say it's a pretty mediocre service overall. And if I recommend it or not, I don't really recommend it for the average person. Just, I, I don't recommend it, I would say. But I would recommend it under some um, certain cases, I would say, if you want, if, like, if you're struggling to emulate Nintendo 64 games and you really want to have access to those games, and if you want to have the DLC for Animal Crossing and Mario Kart, I would say it's worth it. Um, like, just, you, it, it really has to be a specific case if you want this. Like, I mean, it's, like, I mean, the Nintendo 64 games are a lot better now, but if you can emulate the games, that's definitely a better alternative. That's definitely a good alternative. And yeah, in, it's just overall, I wouldn't say it's a very good service. I've just been getting it just because it's convenient for me and just so I can review these on the channel. But yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. Like, I mean, if you're enjoying it, there's not a problem with it. Like, I mean, I did say there's some positives to it like with the way that the 64 games are finally being optimized and like the fact that you get the nintendo 64 and sega genesis games on the switch that's fine um i was just kind of going through my overall thoughts with it but there's also a few ways i think they could improve this and actually make it a decent if not good service like one thing, the main thing, is to reduce the price or add more features. One or the other. I mean, that's kind of the difference between this being a mediocre service and an actual decent, if not good, service. And one way they could do that is adding GameCube games or Game Boy and GBA games. I'm surprised they haven't added Game Boy games yet. And they really should add GameCube games to a Nintendo console at some point. Um, a lot of those games have never been re-released, like Thousand Year Door or Kirby Air Ride, and a lot of people have been wanting to play these games, so Nintendo should provide an option for that, and they don't even have to have like a library or something, they could just port these and just put them on the eShop, and then allow people with the expansion pack to download these games, while other people could um, pay for these games separately. And that's another thing. I feel like people should be able to pay for these games separately, because when you don't have the service, you don't have access to these Nintendo 64 games, obviously. So when Nintendo eventually shuts down the service, these games are going to be inaccessible. So it's pretty unfortunate that they're linked to the service and everything. It would be better if they're just offline, and it would be like... Like, you'd have the option to pay for it um, separately, and you would just be able to download it if you have the expansion pack. I I definitely prefer that system. I really don't like the system they have in place, but yeah. And I think they should also add more DLCs, like I said, I mentioned this earlier. But they should also add maybe even older Nintendo Switch games to this. Um, preferably the online ones would probably make sense. Like, 
uh, but I don't think they would do Mario Kart in Deluxe because of how well it's selling, but something like ARMS would probably do good. Um, it would actually be a pretty good inclusion, because um, not only would it justify the price, but it would also revitalize that game. I know it's definitely not for certain that it would revitalize it, but if it was like a big selling point for the expansion pack, like you get ARMS included for free, or another online game like that, I think that would definitely be a pretty good inclusion. But yeah, overall, it's how I feel they could improve this service overall. But yeah, those are just my overall thoughts on it after a year. Um, if I write, like, like I said, I did go through, like, if I recommend it or not, but just overall, kind of a mediocre service. Just, like, I definitely have, um, more negatives, and the negatives, I would say, outweigh the positives, but if, if you do find it more convenient, I wouldn't say it's that bad. Um, but yeah, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server if you want to. Goodbye.